What's up? Welcome back to Mina's Daily Dose. My name is Mina and thank you for joining me today. If you are new here, hello. Thank you for clicking on this video and if you are already part of the fam, hello. How are you? And thank you for your continuous support. So today I am going to be coming to you guys and I'm going to be talking all about my first trimester and if you are new here then let me just update you i am pregnant yes i am i don't think you guys understand how much effort it took me to get out of the bed okay to turn on this light to put the battery in this camera and turn on and press record it took a lot okay i'm thirsty my lips are dry, I'm breaking out. Honey, it's a lot, but I am here with a video and I am so excited, so let's go ahead and jump right into the video. Okay, so one thing I just want to make sure that I point out before I get started is that I want a lot of my videos to be not only you know just information about my own personal journey but i also wanted to be very informative you know before getting pregnant and even when i did find out that i was pregnant you know going on youtube to find videos that i could relate to yes there were some out there but it was like ugh, i feel like there's like a lack so i want my videos to be as informative as possible and i want you guys to ask me questions too so if you are pregnant right now ask me questions and i know i do have a lot of moms who follow me so give me advice i'm gonna be asking for advice too okay this is my first child okay i need guidance guide me through okay oh so one thing i want to go over first and like i mentioned some people know this some people don't some people may wonder, oh my God, which weeks are included in the first trimester? And so pretty much our first trimester is going to be from week one to week 12, okay? So there are 12 weeks in the first trimester and the first trimester I would say is the most important trimester. I mean, of course, you know, every trimester is important and your baby is developing during during every trimester but the first trimester i would say this is when your baby is doing its most development or most important development okay because i mean you want to make sure that your baby actually survives you know you just want to make sure that you are going to make it to the second trimester okay that is the goal and along with the first trimester there's a lot of things that you should be doing and it's a lot things that you should have been doing you know before you even got pregnant so some of those things includes making sure that you are aware of the state of your health you know for example me I know that I lack in vitamin D along with a lot of other people okay a lot of people have low vitamin D I don't know what it is girl. I don't know what it is but you know lack of vitamin D before I even got pregnant I always took vitamin D and also took other vitamins you know to help me with my immune system and all of those good things so it's good to kind of be aware of where you stand health wise because you want to be healthy for your baby you know and you also want to make sure that you're taking your prenatal vitamin that is so important i was taking prenatals when i was even trying to get pregnant okay take them before you take them before you start you just have to make sure that you're on your p's and your q's okay that you're doing the best that you can for not only you but also for your baby okay so don't forget first trimester is the first 12 weeks and it's in my opinion the most important okay okay let's go ahead and jump right into my first trimester first i'm going to start with some things i didn't experience in my first trimester so I am going to be looking down to my phone because I do have notes on here okay I capture notes to let you guys know what I was going through you know what I was feeling and I also have a funny story as well okay so some things that I didn't experience in my first trimester was morning sickness okay so that includes nausea and vomiting I think one of the most misconceptions for pregnancy is that you're going to be sick okay some women are sick some women are not sick. Not everyone is going to be sick. I am a true believer that 
you being sick or not is sometimes dependent upon the gender of your child. I do believe that, but I think it just depends on the woman, okay? I think the closest thing I experienced to being nauseous was having heartburn, kind of. It wasn't even like crazy heartburn, but it was just like, I don't know, like I was having like digestive issues. Depending on what I ate, it just wasn't settling well and it was just not doing it. But it wasn't being, it wasn't, I wasn't nauseous after it. It was just like, it wasn't digesting quick enough for my body. Another thing that I really didn't experience was like 12 weeks of mood swing. Before I even knew I was pregnant, I was a little bit emotional. It wasn't like going back and forth in between angry, mad, sad, depressed, you know, like it was none of that. I really, I was more so emotional when it came to like watching certain movies and to watch, you know, reading certain stories that were sad. Like I would just cry easily <clears throat> and things like that, but it didn't happen a lot, but it did happen. I wouldn't say I had like 12 weeks of mood swings, you know what I'm saying? It was just like for a couple days that I remember that I was just like very emotional and didn't know what was going on with me, all right? So now let's get into the things that I did experience. So some of the symptoms that are very common that I did experience was cramping, fatigue, breast tenderness, constipation and diarrhea, hyperurination, body aches, discharge, headaches, and just being unmotivated, okay? Lazy, unmotivated, lack of energy. And you know, those are very common symptoms when it comes to pregnancy, but I'll go ahead and elaborate on my own experience for each one. So when it came to being crampy, I definitely was crampy the first month, you know? It was a lot going on down there, and honey, I was definitely crampy. And it's like when your cycle is on, but just constant. You know, you can tell when everything is expanding, when everything is growing, when your body is changing. And I think that had a lot to do with the cramping. And a little bit later, I get more into the cramping and then some other things that came along with that. But the next thing was fatigue. Oh my goodness, you guys. Oh, I remember like the first six weeks, seven weeks, I would say I was just so tired. I mean, it was just like, you guys, I remember literally, okay? I remember I went to work, came home around five o'clock, 4.30, 5 o'clock, okay? And I took a nap for two hours. Like, I just couldn't. I could not be awake any longer. Like, there were times that I went out to my car for lunch and took a nap, okay? just tired you know and during your first trimester you know you're going to be fatigued and you you want something to help you get energy and during my first trimester i drank probably my most coffee throughout my whole pregnancy so you know i was drinking like full caffeinated coffee not a lot because i know you're supposed to decrease but i'm definitely a coffee drinker okay and it's just something like a routine it's a ritual it's something that i do every single day i've had to reduce down to like one cup a day which was fine but that didn't do anything for me that did not give me energy and i was just tired okay your girl was tired next was breast tenderness I think a lot of women, they think when they get pregnant that their whole breast is gonna be tender. And it's not really your whole breast, it's just the nip, okay? My nipples were so sore, okay? My nipple tenderness has not subsided at all. Like my breasts are still, like my nipples are still pretty tender. And I don't know if that's supposed to be that way, I have no idea, but breast tenderness is something that I definitely experience and I feel like that is one of the tall tale signs that you're pregnant anyway so I feel like a lot of women experience that symptom just disclaimer if you have a weak stomach if you believe that bodily functions are disgusting then I would say skip ahead about 30 45 seconds to a minute okay maybe even two because I have a story to go along with I'm not a person who shies away from speaking about disgusting things okay I'm in the healthcare field, 
I don't care. Okay. Constipation and diarrhea. I would say during my first trimester, it was more so constipation. There was a little bit of diarrhea in there, you know, a little bit, but it was mainly constipation. And I feel like a lot of women experience this. I mean, it's a natural symptom to go through when you are pregnant because your body is changing and, and the fluctuation of your hormones really makes you constipated, okay? It just messes up your digestive system in general. So, oh my God, you guys, I have to tell the story. It's funny after looking at it after, okay? But I would say this was maybe around, it may have been around like week eight or week nine. And you guys, I'm not kidding. This is a real story, okay? So I get up in the middle of the night, okay? Of course, you know, we'll get to hyperurination. You know, you're getting up all the time to pee. urinate, okay? So, I get up in the middle of the night and I go to the bathroom, okay? I get up because I have this overwhelming feeling that I have to take a number two, three, four, five, six, I don't know. Like, first of all, my stomach was so bloated and my stomach was so hard. I feel like my stomach was about to explode, you guys. It was just the most... Ugh, it was the most uncomfortable feeling. And I just didn't know what to do, okay? I just didn't know what to do. So, I'm on the toilet, okay? And we're going to classify this as a shit attack, okay? That's what this was. It was literally a shit attack, okay? I feel like I was being attacked by my own shit. And I didn't know what to do, okay? So I'm on the toilet and as I mentioned, my stomach feels hard. I'm like, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? You know, and my, so many things are running through my head. Like, am, is my stomach about to explode? Do I need to call 911? What is going on? And at this point, it was diarrhea, okay? So like I mentioned, most of my first trimester was constipation, but this was diarrhea, okay? I was constipated for so long that it had mutated into diarrhea and it was just about to come out. It was like, we have to come out now. We need to come out now, okay? So you guys, it started coming out and you guys, it wouldn't stop. Oh my God, it, it I mean, <sighs> I'm suffering PTSD just thinking about it, okay? I don't wanna go through that again. But I was on the toilet and you guys, I was just like, oh my goodness. And as it was coming out, my stomach was still hard. It felt like it was just so full of gas. It felt like it was about to explode. And then I started feeling faint, you guys. I started feeling like I was about to pass out. And I was just like, oh my goodness, what is going on? Like, I was like, I need to call 911. Like, what? I can't. What is going on right now? I've never had this type of situation ever. So, I call my husband, okay? Side note, my husband is a deep sleeper, okay? And when he wakes up, he's like, like shocked, like he was on a whole nother planet. Literally, that's how it's always, it's always like that when he wakes up abruptly. So, I'm feeling faint. I've called him one million times, so I'm losing energy. You know, I have poop coming out me. I don't know what's about to go on. I don't know what's happening right now. And I'm like, get, I'm like, bae, bae, get me something to drink. Get me some Pedialyte. Thank God I had Pedialyte, you guys. Thank God. I always have, you know, a cup on my side of my bed. I always sleep with water or whatever on the side of my bed. And so I had like, you know, a mason jar with some water in it. And I was like, <clears throat> giving him directions like, you know, get the cup on the side of my bed and just pour Pedialyte in there. You know, just give me some Pedialyte, you know. Oh my God, y'all. I hear him in the kitchen, okay? He's in the kitchen. I hear cups rambling, glass, refrigerator opening. And I'm in there like, oh my God, help me, help me. I feel like I'm about to die. I don't know what's going on. And then I'm like, babe, what's taking you so long? And he like, I'm getting some Peter light. I'm trying to find a cup. I'm like, babe, it's a cup on my side of the bed. You know, and he's like, but it's water in it. I'm like, babe, it's Pedialyte, diluted. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you've ever had Pedialyte, Pedialyte is like concentrated in my opinion. You know, like a lot of athletes drink Pedialyte in order to be hydrated. But for me, like, I'm not working out. I'm not playing a sport at this point in my life. 
and I just need something to keep me hydrated with some taste that I know will you know keep me hydrated for a long amount of time so I'm like you know just pour it in there so he walked back from the, out the kitchen get the cup go and you guys I'm on the toilet like like literally now one is out I need help you know he finally brings in the pita like in the water whatever mixture okay and I'm drinking it and I'm like oh. as I'm drinking I feel myself come back to life I'm like oh thank you Lord I don't know what my body was going through but it was trying to get all of this out of me okay I don't know how many women experience this in pregnancy I don't but it was just like the craziest thing and I just was outdone after that. I was like, I really hope I don't have this again because I can't do it. I cannot do this again. It was an experience and it was very funny afterwards, okay? It was very funny afterwards. So the next thing, hyperurination, you know, you're urinating all the time. Getting up, just using bathroom, using bathroom, using bathroom, using bathroom. And you know, you wanna stay hydrated through the night, so you drink throughout the night, but then you also have to use the bathroom throughout the night. And for me personally, my child is sitting so low, okay? My child is only one centimeter away from my bladder. So, you know, my urination is probably a little bit more crazy. Okay, because my child is so low, super duper low, and head is always down. So more than likely, I usually always feel like I have to use the bathroom. I have to be aware of what using the bathroom means and what doesn't using the bathroom mean, okay? And I'll get into that a little bit too. But after that was body aches. I mean, I was so achy, you guys. Like I mentioned, I was crampy, but I was also achy. Like, it would be times where I would get up on the weekends and cook breakfast. I couldn't even stand up the whole time to cook pancakes. I had to sit down in a chair at the stove and flip the pancakes. How crazy does that sound? That sounds so crazy to me. And I really hoped, I was like, I hope my pregnancy isn't like this the whole time. Like, I really hope I don't feel like this the entire time like I can't stand up to cook breakfast like that is insane to me so it's good to know that I can now stand up and my body has acclimated to its new normal and it's not a problem but yeah a lot of body aches especially in the hip area um I had some aches and I think that's that goes for a lot of women you know because your pelvis and all that good stuff and the relaxing, okay, the relaxing, which is a hormone that relaxes your joints and muscles, or well, more so your joints, it relaxes your joints. So that's why you feel a little bit more achy, you know? But yeah, achiness was definitely something else. Um, discharge, I definitely had discharge. I had brown discharge, and now I'll get a little uh, in a little bit more in detail in this in my next bullet of my symptoms. But I did have discharge, which was brown discharge. And all I have to say is, do not be fearful if you have brown discharge. Okay. Now, in the same breath, don't be fearful, but also let your health provider know. Okay. It's very important that they are aware of your state at every second, every moment of the day, okay? So if you have brown discharge, or if you even have a question about anything, you know, go ahead and get go to your provider and ask them and let them know what's going on. My provider is absolutely amazing. I mean, told them they got me in for blood work to check my hemoglobin, to make sure my level was great and everything worked out perfectly fine. But brown discharge is something that is normal when you are pregnant. You will see the majority of your brown discharge in your first trimester. And I have to make sure that I was aware of that. I did a lot of research, you guys. And that's something I like to do anyways, is research anything I'm interested in or if I'm going through something, you know, if it's pregnancy, if I got a cold or anything like that, honey, I'm researching. I'm researching natural ways, natural remedies, and just being educated and knowledgeable on whatever that topic may be. So brown discharge, honey, it's normal, it's gonna happen, it's old blood leaving the body, and you just have to remember that everything is changing, expanding, and that is going to come with some discharge, you know? It's gonna come with something, all right? And then headaches. I've definitely had headaches 
I've even had headaches in my second trimester, but my first trimester, my headaches were a little bit more consistent, I would say. I mean, they were lasting longer than a day, lasting longer than two days, and it wasn't like a banging headache, but it you're gonna have headaches. You know, just being more mindful about my environment, my surroundings, and what could trigger a headache, and just being more aware, and making sure I'm drinking water, and eating the right things that won't trigger a headache. And my last thing that is a common symptom is being lazy and unmotivated. You guys, I think every woman who is pregnant go through this, you know. I, I mean, it may also depend on your line of work. It definitely affected my YouTube channel for sure. It affected, you know, everything in my life other than me having my, my job, because I do have a career, you know, so it didn't affect that, obviously. But everything that came secondary to that, it affected you know it just wasn't happening I was so lazy I was tired and I don't want to say it's me like I think it's really important for women who are pregnant to understand what they're going through but not to like blame themselves or feel bad for what they're going through and the the changes because they're all natural and everybody goes through it you know and it allowed me to adjust to my new life of you know caring a little human so that's something I think that a lot of women experience is you know this lack of energy, laziness, unmotivated, yeah.